Hello Watch It Baptist Church, it is lovely to be joining you this week. My name's Chris Fry, I'm one of the regional ministers at Southwest Baptist Association and I'm so sorry that we're not able to gather in person as we would wish. I'm sorry that I'm not able to be with you in person at the school as I would wish to, but I would if I could. And God is still with us, God blesses us as we gather around his word, whether that's in our homes or wherever we are, his spirit is with us and he has a word for us this morning. It was lovely to have an invitation from Mike to speak to you today, to join you, and I'm looking forward to sharing God's word together. But before I do that, I definitely want to bring you greetings from your sisters and brothers around the Southwest, from the other churches that are part of SWBA, part of our association. We're joined in Christ wherever we are. We're part of the same family. We're living and working in different places, in different communities, but we're sisters and brothers in Christ. And I bring you their love and greetings today. So as I wondered what to speak about today, I felt I wanted to say something about prayer. So here we are, we're gonna learn a little bit about prayer from one verse in Luke's gospel. So this is Luke chapter 11 and verse one. Once, Jesus was in a certain place, praying. As he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Well, it's a short reading today anyway. So when I said uh, that we'd be talking about prayer today, I wonder how many of you were actually quietly and secretly thinking, oh no, not, an, not, not prayer again, not another sermon on prayer. It always makes me feel guilty, makes me feel inadequate, and reminds me how bad I am at praying and how I should be doing it more. Well, if you did feel like that, don't worry, because we all kind of feel like that. We all agree that prayer is important, that prayer is really central, and we really ought to be doing more of it. But we hardly ever really actually admit how hard it is, how hard we find it, and how much less of it that we do than we think we should. We all know that we need to do it, but it doesn't come naturally to us, not to any of us. So don't worry, it's not just you. And it frustrates me really, because if it's so intrinsic and so vital to my life as a Christian, which the Bible tells me that it is, well, why couldn't God just make it easy? Surely that would make more sense. How can it make any sense to say, now this is something you really, really need to do and then make it really hard? I want it to be easy. But maybe it's hard for a reason. All good things come at a cost, don't they? We know that. We don't value nearly so much something that comes easily as we do something we've really had to work for. If it's easy, it's cheap. I think prayer is hard because it matters, because it's so important. And I've noticed in my life, you may have done as well, that where there's something that I know I need to do, but it's hard for me, it's usually something that I'm gonna grow from, something that I need to learn from, something that will shape me, something that shows me parts of myself or parts of my thinking that need to change, that are false, or selfish or distorted. It's not the things that come easily that change us, is it? It's the things that are hard. It's the things that we grapple with and wrestle with and have to persevere with that slowly, slowly will bring about in us the transformation that God wants for us. And this thing that some of us call discipleship and, and what we mean by that really is just following Jesus and trying to live his way. That thing that we talk about it's about transformation. It's about being changed. It's not about learning more things or knowing more stuff or reading the Bible more or doing more good deeds. 
It's about allowing the presence and the spirit of God to enter us, to live in us and to change us, to transform who we are and how we are. So that's two really important things about prayer already. It's hard and we need to be honest about that. But it's hard for a reason because it transforms us. Here's a third thing I want us to notice, and this one's from our verse in Luke. Jesus prays. Have you ever thought about that? Even the Son of God set time aside to pray and talk to his Father. He found it necessary to pray. He needed that connection with his Father and the Spirit. Jesus taught quite a lot about prayer, really, but what's really interesting is that he didn't just teach about prayer. He prayed himself. In Luke chapter 11, in that verse, it says that Jesus was in a certain place praying and the disciples could see him. So he's in a particular place. He's not just walking down the street praying. He's not lying in bed praying. He's gone somewhere particular to pray. And we don't know where it was, but it does seem clear that there is something significant about the physical act of going somewhere particular to pray. A place where you can meet with God, a place for you and him. There is something powerful about the conscious act of choosing to draw near, to make the effort to go to a particular place because I've got an appointment in my diary today at this time that I'm going to spend some time with God rather than just shoehorning it in around other things. And it says that when he'd finished praying, one of the disciples comes to him and says, Lord, Teach us to pray. So here's what's really interesting here. The disciples already knew how to pray. They'd grown up being taught how to pray. They were Jews. As Jews, they prayed three times a day. They did regular, formal, disciplined prayer. They knew how to pray. But now they watch Jesus and they say, Lord, teach us to pray like that. They've seen the way that he prays. They've seen that it's different to how they've been taught. They've seen that it's about a relationship with his father. And they've seen the closeness and the lovingness of that. And they've seen the power and the presence of the spirit in him as a result of his kind of praying. And that's the heart of prayer, really. It's not about duty. It's about relationship. We are invited into loving relationship with our Father. In my personal readings this week, I was in Deuteronomy, in the Old Testament, and I was meditating on these verses from chapter 6. It uses the term the Lord, but I'm going to use Yahweh, which is the name God gave for himself, because I just find it helpful to give God a name here. And when you see the Lord in little capitals like that in the Bible, it means that the name of Yahweh was in the original text. So let's read this. Listen, O Israel, Yahweh is our God and Yahweh alone. And you must love Yahweh your God with all your heart, all your soul and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. And, and it carries on. As I read through those verses several times, what really stood out to me, I found that I noticed, was in verse 5 that it says, you must love Yahweh your God. And I thought, 
you know, I think we get, we kind of get distracted by the bit that comes next about the heart and soul and mind and strength. And we miss this really remarkable thing that we are being invited to love God. Back then, with all the other gods that were around and that were fashionable, they weren't about love. You would fear them or obey them or serve them or make offerings to them in the hope of keeping them on your side. But you wouldn't love them. It wasn't about love and it definitely wasn't personal. And it is really striking that with this God, our God, what he's asking from us is not fear or duty, it's love. The God of the entire universe is saying what I want most of all is a relationship with you, a loving relationship. And we can't command love. God knows that. If he just commands us to love him, then what he'll get is not love. Love has to be a choice, willingly given. And he gives us that choice. But he wants us to know that he's there just waiting for us, longing for that connection and that closeness if we invite him in. To be in relationship, as we all know, requires time. Time, commitment, focus, perseverance. And so here's the fourth thing that I want us to note. Prayer is God's invitation to loving relationship with him. It's not about duty. It's not about rules. It's not about meeting the required standard. It's not about keeping up appearances. It's about genuine loving relationship with your father who loves you. Does it make you feel differently about prayer to think about it in that way? God loves you more than anything and he just wants you, he wants me, he wants us to choose to spend time with him. Away from all the things that distract us, being honest, talking honestly to him about how things are and receiving from him what we need and what he wants to give. So here's what we've seen today, just to sum up. Prayer is hard, and we need to be honest about that. But it's hard for a reason, because it transforms us if we persevere with it. And being transformed and changed is what our Christian life is all about. Jesus prayed. Even he needed to. He needed that connection with his father. And what the disciples noticed about how Jesus prayed was that it didn't just feel dutiful. It felt like a warm and loving relationship. And finally, that God invites each of us into loving relationship with him. Prayer is God's invitation to enter into that relationship with him. He's not waiting to pounce on you or sigh at how useless you are. He's just longing for you to come and give him some time, spend some time with him, not out of duty, but out of love. Let me pray for us now. Loving God, here we are, your children, your people who you love. And we know you to be a God of relationship who doesn't want to stay far away at a distance, but who comes close. And that you're interested in every one of us. Father God, will you teach us to pray? 
teach us that we can pray, that you want us to pray, not as a boring duty, but out of a real desire to connect with you, to know you and to be filled with you. And as we pray, in whatever ways we do that, will you come and change us? Transform us one bit at a time. Strip away all the stuff that gets in the way, all the stuff that is false. May we be unafraid to come to you. And may we be willing to stick at it and persevere, even though it's hard because that's the only way we can be changed. Help us to pray, Holy Spirit, help us and transform us. In Jesus' name, Amen.